Hey everyone, this is Roberto Blake and welcome to an Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial. In this tutorial I'm actually going to be teaching you simple color correction and color grading. In this tutorial we're going to be using the three-way color corrector as well as the RGB curves tool and we're also going to learn how to do this non-destructively using an adjustment layer. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the first things we're going to do is create a new sequence from our clip as you can see here. Um, one of the convenient things you can do in Adobe Premiere Pro CC is you can actually scrub through the footage as you saw me do earlier. So we're just going to go ahead and rename our sequence here just for convenience. And let's go ahead and jump right into the timeline. We're going to zoom in on our actual clip um, just so that we can control things a little easier. It's not going to really matter since this is a very short clip, but let's just go ahead and do this um, for the sake of good habits. The next thing we're going to do is with our clip selected, we're going to go ahead and toggle over to the effect controls panel. And as you can see here, we already have some options where we can basically control the motion, opacity, and time mapping of our image. Um, so we're not going to do any of that at the moment. What we're going to do is go back into our actual effect controls, go to video effects, and color correction. And you can access this if you have the default selected in Premiere Pro or if you have um, video editing selected. We're going to scroll down to the three-way color corrector and we can double click on this or we can drag it over to our clip and it'll put the effects on our actual clip and we'll be able to start actually color grading this. Now um, if you want to change the overall color um, wash of the video clip that you're editing, you'll usually want to toggle the uh, master control here and that'll just make things simpler. When you do though, it's going to go ahead and reset everything with your image. We're going to have a minor delay just because of the fact that I'm using a screen capture for this in addition to um, doing the actual editing. Since I have 8 gigs of RAM in this laptop, it usually um, happens a lot more quickly. But um, this is part of one of the other constraints of the fact that I have the browser open and I actually do have the video recording software. So you know that's going to slow this down a little bit. So I apologize for any delay. Um, what you see me doing here is we're going to use an adjustment layer to control our um, color corrections instead of doing it on the actual footage. And the reason we're doing this, um, even just as an example, is because if you have multiple clips, you won't want to have to do this over and over um, to have a consistent look throughout your clips. It's easier just to do an adjustment layer over all of your multiple clips. So that'll come in handy just in terms of your good habits. And we can apply our color correction to that. Um, as you can see here. It'll also give us the ability to toggle on and off of it. So when we're doing our actual editing, we can um, you know, adjust it um, and not have to deal with any time. One of the things I'm going to do here is I'm going to bump up the saturation a little bit just so that um, my overall colors are stronger. And when I do the rest of my editing, that's going to make sense. You can see that you can either slide this one way or the other and control that and you can desaturate it or you can go ahead and get uh, more out of those colors by saturating it. Um, we're going to just see what 130 or so looks like here before we go back up to um, adjusting our overall colors. And I want to give this more of a cool feeling. Um, we're going to go ahead and toggle master here and we're going to pull this down into our blues and just see how that looks. All right, so that's actually a much um, nicer overall look um, to this. Um, it doesn't quite look as orangey, and you can see that that actually looks considerably better when we toggle it off. Um, I also want to adjust the levels. This will be familiar to you if you used Photoshop. You can drag the dark over here, and um, you know all the darks will uh, become considerably more dark. If you drag the white, the um, bright, colors will become more bright. It'll become a little washed out here or blown out rather. Um, and if we toggle for the center, that will um, increase our contrast in terms of our mid-tone um, range values. So we can do that and that's actually not too bad either. But I'm going to concentrate on actually doing a combination of this one and um, dealing with um, our darker overall colors by sliding this from the left and that's going to create the overall tonal value that I want and really make this pop. You're going to see that it doesn't look nearly as flat as our previous uh, version of this without the effect. 
and that I'm going to get some great contrast in here and this is going to have this nice cool autumn feel instead of being entirely too warm. I'm going to also increase the saturation just so it doesn't feel quite as flat. And you can see what a huge difference that makes. So this is, um, I think, looking very good already. I, I could stop here or I could take this even further, but this is a good overall look for this and we don't really need to do that much else. I prefer to work primarily with the through a color corrector, but I'm gonna show you two more things you can do. I'm gonna show you curves and I'm gonna show you um, lumetry. Now, um, with the curves, similar to Photoshop, you can pull these individual color channels and you can uh, bring them out. I still want a cool overall feel to this, but I don't want it to look too, too blue. I still want some of it to be warm because it is autumn. So I'm gonna mostly work with my blue and my red channels in here. And I'm going to um, adjust that. I'm gonna to toggle this on and off just to see how I like it. Um, again, you can do whatever you feel your image needs, but um, I'm going to adjust this and try to create a nice balanced look here. So um, one of the other things I'm gonna do is I feel like it's almost a little too bright. So I'm going to adjust some of that here in the curves. You can adjust those tonal values in the curves if you want to, but you can also do it with Lumetri once you have the overall color values the way you want. If you really want to um, deal with the lightness and darkness overall. You can do that with Lumetri, which is what we're going to get into here next. As soon as I get um, these color values the way I want them here, and I think those blues actually look nice. And again, I'm going to toggle this on and off just so you can see what it actually looks like. Big difference, huge improvement there. If you really want to see the difference in your color grading, you can use the source monitor and you can compare them. So this gives you now a much better all over impression of the difference between what our color correction and color grading has really done for this image. Um, instead of being um, overly warm and flat, we now have a really nice, well-balanced, cooler, um, higher contrast film overall. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is actually use um, Lumetri Curve and what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to control um, the amount of light in terms of you know how bright this is overall or how dark it is without affecting the, the um, other color values we, the way we did with curves. And you can see the difference that that makes. That creates um, you know a great deal of difference there. And if I go this direction, it's going to become considerably more blown out, um, as you can see minus the delay there for my um, video recording software. But anyway, if I go too far in, you're gonna notice that it's gonna get um, extremely dark and way too contrasty, um, and it doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna bring it back over here. I don't even know if I'll keep this, but I did want to show you that because these are the three tools that I use for my color correction and color grading. And this doesn't look bad overall, but if I don't like it, I don't have to keep it. I can actually just go um, back in and for any of these um, effects that you're using for your uh, video effects and um, color correction, if you want you can either um, click off the effects and that will take them away. You can do that in the timeline or you can do that in the effect controls or you can go into the effect controls and you can just hit backspace and that will get rid of the effect overall um, completely. So you can do that um, and those are just different ways that you can approach it. I prefer to usually toggle them on and off so that, again, if I don't want it, I can you know, come back to it and I can make that decision. But in this case, we're just gonna get rid of it because I don't think we need it. I think that this looks good um, as is and would be excellent if we wanted to just export this. So just gonna do a little bit of playback and just see how comfortable that feels. Again, I think this overall looks very good. I think this has the kind of um, film look that we want. It's balanced. It's much better than the original that we had. So I think this is what we're going to keep. And again, I'm going to toggle this on and off so you can just see how far we've really come with this. And I'm going to play it back a little. And again, this to me just feels uh, too warm. Um, it feels too orange. 
um, it doesn't feel quite right. So it's good that we did our color correction and color grading to this and that we balanced it out a little more. It doesn't look nearly as flat. This looks like something that we would actually want to watch. So now you have a good understanding of how um, you can simply approach color correction and color grading in Adobe Premiere CC. Um, ultimately, you can do this in Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 as well as um, Adobe Premiere Pro CS5 if that's what you have. None of the features that I've used in this particular tutorial have been exclusive to um, Adobe Premiere CC, um, but I do prefer Adobe Premiere CC personally. Um, I also like the Lumetri Looks engine for um, extremely fast color grading, um, and that's something that I'll cover in a different tutorial since it is a Premiere Pro CC exclusive. We can also take snapshots of our images here if we want to use them for reference and compare them later. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to do more advanced color grading, I will have a tutorial on that. I'll also probably do a tutorial on color grading using Adobe SpeedGrade, which was um, a new product that was introduced in um, CS6. And there's also a CC version that's actually considerably better and has a much better interface. But again, those are all for another tutorial. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to like this video if you like it, subscribe. Um, I'll try and do these videos as often as I can. I usually do Photoshop CC tutorial videos on Thursdays. And if I can, I'll do these weekly. But if not, I'll just have to release them as I can. If you have a request for a video that you want me to do um, with Adobe Premiere Pro, um, go ahead and leave that information in the comments below. All right, thanks for watching.